a direct violation, a direct attack on the United States Constitution. And I was 10 years old at the time. And um, over the years, I've had a, spe a special interest in uh, not only the Texas uh, Book Depository Building, but over on uh, Daly Plaza on Elm Street, the Dow Tex building, which will be the subject of uh, uh, future uh, videos, which I'll upload to YouTube. What I would like to do with this presentation is introduce you to uh, an FBI file, a, uh, a release from the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, regarding the Texas School book depository. So we'd like to show you photographs, floor plans, and parking lots from that uh, release. We'll have minimal uh, discussion, interpretation, or commentary on uh, the slides I'm about to show you, but I will follow up with a part two where I'll backtrack and uh, put in some some comments and opinions. Anyway, let's get started. The assassination of President John F. Kennedy Texas School Depository, photographs, floor plans, and parking lots from the FBI document. What we will show you here uh, are photographs and sketches to give you a much better understanding of what the Texas Book Depository building looked like on that day in November of 1963 and the days that followed. The museum is up on the sixth floor. They have a live cam, and I strongly recommend that you can um, observe uh, from that vantage point various locations 24-7. Uh, and uh, I will upload the link for the uh, Dallas, uh, the uh, Kennedy Museum that's on the sixth floor. Texas School Book Depository, Dallas, Texas, Federal Bureau of Investigation release. What we will be showing you will be the basement floor plan, the dressing room, the east wall, and then looking west of conveyor and stairs. On the first floor, entrance to the loading dock, rear entrance to first floor, northwest corner, etc., stairway in the lobby, which of course anyone who's a student of the assassination knows uh, it's of uh, paramount interest. Second floor plan, we'll see the lunchroom where Oswald supposedly was uh, drinking from a bottle of Coke. Third floor plan, fourth, fifth, and sixth, the critical sixth floor. And then uh, very few people know what actually was on the seventh floor. We'll see the seventh floor plan actually from the southeast corner location, the workshop and storage. But very little is really known about that seventh floor. And then we'll take a look at the parking lot. We'll see the view towards parking lot number one and Frazier's car in parking lot number one. Texas School Book Depository. Here's a diagram of the basement. Incidentally, at the end of this presentation, uh, you'll have a contact point for me if you'd like a hard copy of this. We can get it to you for just uh, shipping and handling costs. No, no profit, no uh, intended, but we can get you a, a, a hard copy or uh, copies of the PowerPoint slides. Here's the dressing room located on the east wall of the basement. Looking west along the conveyor towards the stairs. Sketch showing the diagram of the first floor, Houston Street Dock. We can see the open storage space, Mr. Truly's office, and, uh, and dining room, toilet. Elevators, overhead door, this is over on Elm Street, and here is Houston Street. This is the entrance door to Houston Street loading dock.
Rear entrance door from the first floor to the loading dock. First floor looking southwest from the rear entrance. Here's the northwest corner of the first floor. Rear entrance, first floor. Mr. Truly's office. As you may recall, Mr. Truly was the person who uh, escorted the policeman in, who had drawn his gun, where they located Oswald in the lunchroom drinking a bottle of Coke. Here's the entrance lobby. First glance, it looks like a little bear cub looking in. Can't quite tell what that is. It's probably just a jacket laying there. And this is, uh, of course, where the policeman came in with his gun drawn. Um, he had been on a motorcycle in the motorcade. Stairway between the first and second floors. Here's the main entrance. Many films from the uh, from that day uh, show the main entrance. I've uploaded one or two to YouTube. And, uh, of course, this was secured, the building was secured uh, about 10, 15 minutes after the shooting. Oswald, uh, supposedly by then, had left and uh, uh, entered a bus, as evidenced by a bus transfer ticket that he found in his pocket in the theater. Here's the voucher and sales slip storage room. rear entrance and door to the domino room. Later on I'll upload uh, some commentary on this. In the domino room there was a man who used to play dominoes at lunchtime and uh, uh, one or two people who worked in the building testified that they saw Oswald as late as 10 after 12 reading a newspaper eating his lunch in the domino room. Essentially uh, this is a room where employees that were minorities, uh, a handicapped individual, and um, very frequently Oswald would eat lunch in the so-called domino room. This is the entrance to the domino room. The bench is toppled to show the dimensions of bottom construction. Southeast corner of the domino room, benches in the usual position. Northeast corner of domino room. Jacket discovered on window still at left. Uh, on the window sill at the left. Whose jacket it is? It's not, not identified. Of course, it was Oswald was not the only person working at the Texas Book Depository Building. Could be anyone's jacket. Here's a detail of the window sill showing a place where the jacket was found. Work gloves, looks like a pair of shoes. Here's the northwest corner of the domino room, a shower entrance at left. Southwest corner of the domino room showing the entrance door and entrance to shower. Schematic showing diagram of the critical second floor uh, in, in, with respect to uh, Oswald's whereabouts between 12 o'clock and 12.30 p.m. on that day. And uh, here we can see the uh, office space, Elm Street, Houston Street. And uh, over here we see uh, Mr. Campbell's office closet, elevator, lunchroom. Here's the Coke machine. Elevators. 
conference room. Stairs between the second and third floors. Entrance to office space and lunchroom. This is where uh, Truly and the policeman, uh, the policeman noted seeing Oswald through the door. Here's a view through the entrance door from the lunchroom lobby. This is the employee's lunchroom. Here's the north wall of the lunchroom. Here is the Coca-Cola machine, where presumably Oswald drew a Coke. Employee refrigerator. Northwest corner of the lunchroom. This was a snack machine. Hallway and entrance to office space. Office space looking east. Main entrance to the office space. Schematic of the third floor. Storage, hallway, elevator, the other two elevators, private offices, McGraw Hill Books, and uh, the Greg Publishing Division, room 305. Here's the hallway. Allen and Bacon private offices. Here's the diagram of the fourth floor. Private offices, Scott Freeman and Company, supplies. Houston Street, of course, in Elm. A lot of open storage space here. Diagram the sixth floor. And I think we can see uh, the critical locations. A lot of empty space, mostly empty space. Here's the view onto Houston Street. Elevators and stairwells. Southeast corner of sixth floor showing the arrangement of cartons shortly after the shots were fired. We see uh, index fingerprints pointing southwest. Left palm print, hand pointing southwest. Right palm pr uh, print, hand pointing west. This is the window area, the southeast corner, showing two cartridge cases which are circled. Now, I believe Bonnie Williams and another employee were right downstairs on the 5th, and they had testified that they heard shells hitting the floor. And, of course, uh, Bonnie Williams had had a chicken uh, sandwich for lunch and had been up there before going down to the fifth floor. And uh, the remains of his chicken lunch were found in this general area. Window area, southeast corner, showing three cartridge cases which are circled in the sniper's nest. Approximate location of wrapping paper bag and the location of the palm print on carton near the window in the southeast corner. Hand position is shown by dotted line on box. Approximate location of the wrapping ba paper bag. Mary Farrell, the uh, JFK historian, had commented quite a bit on uh, the problems with the, uh, uh, the wrapping, the curtain rods that Oswald said he brought to work and some people said was the, uh, the rifle. Rolling reader, storage area, cartons indicated, looking toward the window in the southeast corner.
Position of rifle when discovered. Of course, the critical point here is did Oswald have enough time to wipe the rifle? No palm prints uh, were uh, found on the rifle, some people will say. And uh, others say that uh, uh, after Oswald's execution, someone pressed his uh, palm print on the rifle. There's even controversy about the serial numbers. The photograph in the Warren Commission, um, the numbers, the letter C and the number 2, look very different from uh, the impressions found on the rifle that's in the U.S. Uh, the National Archives. Uh, they, anyone who collects coins would be able to look at the serial numbers and tell that the letter C and the number 2 are radically different on the image in the Warren report and the actual rifle that is in the archives. Oswald, did he have enough time to clean the rifle, put it in position, get around the boxes and get down to the lunchroom without losing any breath? Here's the position of a clipboard when discovered. Stairway this way. Here's a diagram of the seventh floor, which very little really has ever been reported. And uh, there's no reason to exclude uh, the possibility that there was someone up on the seventh floor involved in a uh, potential conspiracy. Here's a storage area. Ladder to the roof. Elevators and stairwell. These are the windows in the southeast corner of the workshop and storage area. Here's a schematic showing the parking lots for the Texas School Book Depository. Parking lot number uh, 2, parking lot number 3, over Houston Parkway. Here's Elm, and here's the turn onto Houston and over here we have the uh, parking lot number one for the employees in the publishing companies over on Munger Street this is a view from the roof of the Texas School Book Depository looking north toward parking lot number one Frazier's car parked in approximately the same location used on November 22nd, 1963. The Texas School Book Depository is in the background. And of course, this is the car which uh, Frazier supposedly drew, uh, drove Oswald to work that day, where he said he was carrying curtain rods. If you need to get a hold of me, Dave Soriano. I'm an associate professor of chemistry with Pitts Bradford campus in Pennsylvania and uh, I'll be uploading uh, some more uh, videos on this topic and we'll go back over these uh, images. Need to get a copy of this? You know where to find me. Take care.